this session is labelled uh, plenary session participants to hear emerging themes from the discussion at other tables and this is as we have done from the beginning we're going to be essentially reporting back over lunchtime uh, the, the academic and legal team have been capturing uh, what was said during the course of the morning and we'll show a number of slides which summarise what was said. The second thing I want to do in this uh, half hour is to uh, come back to the issue uh, that which raised by David Norris this morning and I propose to give 15 minutes to each of these two exercises. In the first case, the reporting back, and then we are uh, going to, to talk about the, the issue of the Shannad. And we are, again, going to stick to time on this. We are, and if, if I'm going to ask for contributions from the floor on the second matter, I want them to be short. Okay, um, could we now, uh, do we have the, um, Richard, have we got the, uh, so th these are now, uh, I'm not even going to read them out myself, but I mean, you can read them yourself there. The arguments in favor of a new electoral system. Anyone got any comments on, on, on what's, we have a couple of minutes on each, on each of these slides. Tom, Mike. I've got the mic for Tom. Yeah. Thanks, Chairman. Tom Bork. Uh, just on the first point, the excessive constituency service. I'd agree that there is excessive constituency service, but with due respect to the politicians present, I think they bring a lot of it on themselves, and they should be directing more people to the ombudsman. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Any other comments? David. Uh, thank you. I, we discussed at our table um, one thing that isn't directly covered there, and that is uh, the question of a slight change to the Constitution by adding in a few words to permit uh, every county in Ireland to be represented. Um, we were thinking specifically of a county like Leitrim, uh, which has no representation because it's been put in with Sligo and Roscommon. And in order to keep the uh, definitive character of our culture and traditions, uh, I think I certainly felt, and I think my, some of my colleagues agreed, that it would be good that we okay. uh, had in the Constitution that each county should have at least one representative. Okay. So that, for example, Leitrim's okay. uh, particular characteristics should not be completely left out. Okay, we have your point. I think it may be on the next slide. But anyway, uh, Susan. Uh, thank you, Susan O'Keefe. Um, we, we did discuss uh, at this table particularly, and it was something I'm very keen on just to make the comment, that I do believe that local politics, uh, local politicians should have, that that system should be reformed, uh, that there should be greater autonomy at local level, and that then national politicians would be therefore national politicians, and that there's a confusion as it okay. stands at the moment, and that perhaps the way to to affect that change is through changing the electoral system, but it would also require reform of local government yeah. uh, to, go, to make that work properly. Okay, thank you. Over here. Yeah, thanks, James Herc. Uh, thanks, Chairman. Uh, just one point about it, looking at the, uh, the various issues that are emerging from the tables. Earlier on, I think the panel, one or two of the panel, made the point that uh, the electoral system needs to be tweaked or changed to ensure that there's plenty of talent available for the Taoiseach when waiting when he is uh, selecting his cabinet for the incoming government. Um, don't think it's covered in any of the points that have been made there, and maybe it's not reflected at the table, but just right. to make that okay. point. It may be that, you know, it may be we better actually go through the next two slides because some, uh, I think some comments may be actually covered. So could we move on to the next slide, Richard? Okay. Has everyone had a chance to read that? Then we'd move on to the. No, no, okay. Okay, well, maybe let's take comments on this slide then. If 
anyone wishes. And again, I, I am going to favour people who haven't spoken before. Catherine first. Catherine Murphy. Um, there's a couple of things on this that obviously dovetail with the, with the, the first slide, and it, it was two conflicting things at the end, too many, too few independents. Mm. And then you're looking at, at things that are, are a theme coming through there. And one of the things that, that I think that people want to have is they want to retain some level of control and I think there's a resistance to giving um, parties more power when, for example, the whip system is so heavily used and abused. And um, it, it may well be part of the reason why people um, elected a large number of independents and people from smaller parties is to, is to try and introduce greater choice uh, because the choice is very limited. Okay, thank you. David. Yeah, just a general point. I'm not sure if the, the next slide will, will show this, but uh, just in terms of the straightforward proposition, are people for or against electoral reform? There's radically different views that people would have, because people might say, yes, I'm in favour of reform, but I might want to see single-seat constituencies, or I might want to see uh, greater uh, seat constituencies in terms of five, six, or seven-seaters or whatever. So there's just different views mm. that are being expressed. So maybe if, if we could see those, because people might be in favour of reform, but for different reasons in terms of for and against. And I think the nuance mm. of that has somewhat been lost in, in the presentations which are there, if, if that's a fair... It's uh, on the next slide. Next okay. slide, okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Okay, well, maybe we'll have a look at the next slide then, I think. Okay. We will be talking about some of these things in more detail tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Um, Joan? Um, we when we were discussing would have come up with a lot of these um, suggestions. Uh, certainly, we discussed compulsory voting. Not everybody thought it was a good idea, but we felt it was something that the convention maybe should discuss. Um, and also, we would like to definitely know more about the MMP system. Um, uh, not first past the post, we kind of agreed with that one, but yeah. if we could ha have more information, it would be something that we would like to know more about. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Hello, um, John Kenny. Um, just on the point of logic constituencies, one thing that we talked about at our table was perhaps setting a minimum um, a district magnitude of, may, of at least five, maybe in order to increase proportionality. Okay, that's, we, we might come back to that comment now in, in a form of the experts. Yeah. <coughs> Thanks very much. David O'Reilly, just we didn't actually discuss this point, so maybe I'd like a little bit of clarification um, on abolishing by-elections. I just suppose I'm wondering, if we abolish by-elections, what do we do when a CD resigns or dies or for some reason loses a seat just because we didn't get a chance to discuss mm. it, so I'd like a bit of okay. clarification if possible. Yeah, there are a number of options there which we'll talk about in a moment. Uh, Richard, Catherine, is it? Yeah. Catherine Murray, um, just on the compulsory voting, I don't think that's a good idea at all because I feel we already have a nanny state and a nanny Europe even telling us what to do. So I think people should be allowed to decide for themselves whether they're interested enough in voting or not. And just one other point, I would say that um, I feel the reason we have so many independents being elected at the moment is because um, people are becoming very apathetic with the parties that are in power. And I'm not speaking about the current party, I'm even speaking about the previous parties. And I think all of the government parties might need to be aware of that because people are absolutely getting fed up and they'll vote nearly for a monkey just to get you know, say, we'll show you sort of thing. Mm. So I think, you know, they do need to be aware of that. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Catherine. Yvonne. Yvonne, Carn Yvonne Carney. Now, I don't think eight politicians less is acceptable because there's far too many of them for a population of 4,000. Plus, I'd like to see their salaries all brought down 
to 100,000 and pay their own expenses. They're earning enough to buy their phones and whatever else they're claiming on. And they don't uh, give information on everything they claim for, which is wrong. I mean, if you're in a big business, you have to account for yourself. The other thing is I'd like to see the ministers, not politicians, because this government, there's a couple of them, haven't a clue what they're doing. They really haven't. There's one in particular I thought if he well, got no. in. <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> we were friends from naming names. names. <laughs> but I thought if he got in, he would be changing the whole system. I was really rooting for him, and he's a big disappointment. All right. But I'd like to see people that know about finance, about hospitals, about you know what the ministers are doing. It took four ministers to put a budget in the last one. That's not right. They were reading out what the Troika sent them. Yeah, it's, it's just not on. They didn't even um, go to the, the doll with what was coming out. They were as surprised as everyone else. There, it's, it's a dictatorship at the moment, okay. and it needs to be changed. Right, thanks, Thank Yvonne. You. Thank you. Okay, look, could we take uh, any comments that, so, because there were some issues of, of if you like, clarification required or asked for there from the, David, uh, perhaps Michael as well? If there are any, what, yeah, well, I just, I'll start with one or two. The, the by-election, somebody asked about what would be the alternative. David. Somebody asked what would be the alternative to by-elections, I think it was you. Um, what they do in Malta, where they have the single transferable vote system, is that they keep a hold of the ballot papers. And if a, if a member of parliament dies or resigns, they, they go back and recount ha taking that person out of the, uh, to the ballot papers. And they, then they find out who would have been elected. So that's how they do it. In Australia, where they also use this system for certain elections, um, the parties have or, um, the parties decide who the replacement would be. So if it was a Fianna Fáil deputy who was resigning, then the Fianna Fáil party would pick an alternative. So there are other ways of doing it. Um, in terms of um, constituency size, there was a question over here about that, about whether you might set it at five. Um, that's, that's an important point that often comes up, and I, I think Michael Gallagher might have better things to say that, about me that, than me about that, but um, there is a sort of rule of thumb that says if you want to get good proportionality, a, a decent, fair result, you should have constituency sizes of at least five members per constituency. Um, yes, that's right. actually on, on by-elections, we do already uh, fill, fill vacancies without by-elections, that is at European Parliament elections where, as you know, when we vote, as we will next June, we'll see the candidates and they all have substitutes, so it's happened in several cases uh, already in, in this current term, for example, in the, the Munster constituency, Alan Kelly was elected as a Labour MEP, he stood down and the, the top name on, on the list of substitutes, uh, Phil Prendergast became an, MP, an MEP in his stead. So that's, that's another alternative way of filling vacancies without by-elections, which has its advantages, also has the disadvantage that people might feel, I voted for Alan Kelly, I didn't, I didn't, didn't get to see the, the, uh, the substitute. But anyway, there are, there are question marks over that. And on, on um, just going back to something else about county representation, I can, see, I can see difficulties there and the people will say, where do we stop? Should Malahide or the Malahide area, if it's got 20, 30,000 people, should they be entitled to a, to a TD? Um, it's very hard to uh, specify that every particular area should have a TD resident in it. Uh, the voters of Leitrim and every other county have a vote. The voters of Leitrim have votes in uh, two different constituencies. As it happens, there is a Leitrim-based uh, TD, but uh, it, uh, um, there's nothing particular about counties that would be different from any particular areas, should, uh, should the south of County Wexford or whatever be entitled to a TD or the east of County Waterford and, and so on, I think it would be rather hard to, to insist on that through, through the Constitution. Okay. I think we might leave it there for the moment because we, we will be coming back to this in the morning um, in a bit more detail. So I think, and also, you know, as the next session and the panel discussion is also going to, in a, in a way, touch on other aspects of, of this debate. So I think it's probably the right time now to, to, to leave it. And then I now want to move on to the issue uh, raised by David Norris at the very uh, outset this morning. And I said in my response that there, there was a context to uh, what he had stood up and, and said, and I'd like to give that context as far as I'm concerned. 
Um, it, firstly, it, it, it this has a, arose from a letter that I received from uh, Senator uh, Catherine Zappone, uh, Fer Senator uh, Fergal Quinn, uh, Joe Toole, Michael McDowell, and um, Noel Whelan. <coughs> and uh, essentially, th this letter was was asking um, <coughs> they wanted the issue of the Shannad uh, discussed, and specifically, uh, and I quote. We are writing to ask you to put to the convention membership a proposal to alter your work timetable in order to ensure deliberation and recommendations on the position of Shannad Aaron in advance of any autumn referendum. In the alternative, we would ask that membership of the convention discuss a suggestion that you be asked to write to Antishok and Kenny asking not to hold the referendum until such time as the Constitutional Convention has had an opportunity to make its recommendations on the matter. Now, having received this letter, I suggested a meeting, which I had with the, the, the five people, who were signatories. And in the course of that meeting, I did point out that the uh, Oroctus resolution, in, uh, in fact, they had acknowledged it in the letter, the Oroctus resolution uh, establishing the convention, um, had specifically said that, and again I quote, following completion of the above reports, the, re the above reports on the eight issues that we've been asked to deal with, following completion of the above reports, such other relevant constitutional amendments that may be recommended by it. And so that's actually very clear, that that's what the Convention has been asked to do. If we were to, to discuss matters other than the eight, we discuss them after we finished discussing the eight. Um, they then, um, having uh, ha had the meeting, uh, they uh, submitted, made a submission uh, to the convention, which is effectively what David Norris has distributed. Uh, we received this submission last Wednesday and we put it up on the website uh, straight away. We also had looked at the uh, practicality of if we were to consider uh, escalating our work program uh, to get it completed in very short order. And what would mean in effect would be that we would have to have all our work finished by the effectively July. So we'd have to work in both June and July. So we'd have to, assuming that we were going to finish, have the second uh, meeting of this, pro of this issue, electoral reform, as scheduled on the 8th and 9th of June, we would then have to arrange another meeting uh, to get the rest of the work done. And the rest of the work, meaning the, the issue of um, right system, uh, vote for citizens abroad, C should citizens abroad have the right to vote in presidential elections, and the issue of blasphemy. Now, we had deliberately set the citizens meeting for citizens abroad in September to allow possibility for citizens abroad to have engagement and with, with us over, over the year. Uh, and so it, 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 is, um, it would be a very, very tall order to do it, but to, to, to do that. At another level, there's a very practical matter. The, there are actually, it would be impossible to get uh, this hotel uh, in the course of June and July. But we, I do go back to the very basic issue that you know, we are actually not mandated to deal with this issue until, or to any issue other than the eight we've been asked to deal with, until we have finished discussion of the eight issues. Um, <clears throat> there is another issue which I, as chair, as independent chair, I expressed when I met with um, uh, Catherine Zappone and, and, and the others, that I had grave reservations about involving the convention in a current political debate. I think we've worked very hard over, uh, over the last four months to establish our credibility as an organization. I think we've largely succeeded in doing that. But we're doing it to an agenda that we were asked to, to consider. We, and for us to get involved in a, in a current political debate, I fear it would have consequences for our independence and our objectivity. So that, I, I'm putting that before you in my position as chair, which I take seriously, the independent chair. So that's where we, if you like, that's the context that, that 
uh, has led us to today, when, and that's the, context, the background to uh, David's, uh, uh, my, my interpretation of the context uh, led to David Norris's intervention this morning. Now, we are going to keep this, we're going to consider it as a convention, consider the issue before us. Oh yeah, one last thing I, 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 did, I forgot to mention was that last evening we discussed uh, uh, this issue, whether or not there, there should be consideration of this. Uh, uh, we considered this at the, at the, at the, um, the steering group and the steering group was not in favour, the citizen members of the steering group were not in favour of acceding to this request. Now, David, would you like to make a very short intervention? And then I'm going to ask for other views, and particularly views, you know, which reflect the spectrum of views about this. Where's the microphone? Sorry. No, well, yeah. First of all, I'd like to express my great respect for yourself, Chairman, and for your staff, and for the experts. I have no intention of being disruptive or distorting the focus. All I'm asking for is that we take a vote even if it's on a show of hands, that we request respectfully that the Convention write to the Taoiseach and ask him to take a decision on either of these two things, he can say no. But we are adults. We are grown-ups. We're very controlled. We've had the agenda set for us. And I think anybody, whatever their view, and I'm not opening up the question of whether the Senate should be abolished or uh, reformed, that's for a d another discussion. But I do think that we should be entitled, at the very least, to write to our Tisha. That's a very modest demand. Uh, and I think it's particularly important because otherwise the government is not trusting us at no. all. They have not trusted us to add or to, uh, subtract to this. And it's a complete nonsense to say that we can discuss reform of the Senate after it's been abolished. I mean, who could possibly support that as, okay. as a democratic okay. exercise? Okay. The Minister Phil Hogan in the Senate, in the debate on the bill that was presented by my colleagues, in which I supported strongly, said uh, it would be appropriate that their views, this is the convention, be taken into consideration as part of the debate. So he's opened the door. I mean, the words are unambiguous. OK, so David, that's, could that's you finish it. Up? So every single member of the expert panel made at least one substantial reference to Shannon Darren. That's how entrenched it is in the Oireachtas. We're talking about abolishing the Oireachtas making the president vulnerable under the new legislation that's coming in and making the Supreme Court liable to dismissal. Okay, thank you. Very dangerous territory. Angus, sorry. Good morning. Uh, I'd like to uh, support uh, David's contention. I just find that it's illogical that the convention kind of has been asked uh, in, in its programme of work to deal with quite a range of issues but without uh, dealing with one of the most un fundamental changes which has been requested. Um, I, I do believe that you're not that you could send the request to ask the Taoiseach and therefore the Oireachtas to change the remit to allow kind of for the convention to deal with this issue. And in 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 so doing, you're not taking a stance for or against. You're not imposing yourself on, on a political debate which hasn't uh, fully started. Like kind of you're you're, you're asking in many ways that, uh, that that debate be delayed until the convention, which is the body that has been set up to look at the constitution on a range of issues, ha ha had has a discussion. And it impinges on the discussion that we've just had, uh, if, if, if you're talking about fundamental change, that kind of Doyle reform, which we're, we're debating today and next week, that uh, kind of do, do, whatever we decide on those issues, are impacted by whatever is being decided uh, on the Shannon, and the two can't be done in isolation. Okay. Just in, in relation to the September topic, it, it, it is to do with votes for non-resident citizens rather than citizens abroad. Okay, thank you. Uh, I don't, you know. Yeah, Mary, and then Seamus, sorry. Uh, th thanks very much, Chairman. Um, Aon uh, O'Reardon, I find myself actually in agreement with, with David Norris and, and what Angus has said. Uh, I don't think we should be afraid of of, uh, of this debate. I think if there's 75 references to the Shannon in the Constitution, as there are, then obviously it's a, it's a, it's a constitutional matter. And I don't think this convention, uh, you know, should not be trusted. But at least having our, our opinion being, being being heard. And if this convention here today feels that a communication should be sent to the Taoiseach, well, then we should do that. I think we're, as David Norris says, we're all adults. 
Seamus. Uh, just very briefly, uh, just to support the sentiments of the various speakers, um, Senator David Norris and uh, Aidan and um, others who have spoken, uh, I really think in the context of what we're discussing here, uh, to park, as it were, the issue of the abolition or the possible abolition of the Shannon, uh, there's a certain credibility as far as the convention is concerned. And it's not your fault, it's been the, the Constitution Convention has worked very well to date. Uh, I think it's important that it's an integral part of the whole electoral system. People, you know, may complain and say that it's undemocratic and it's unsatisfactory. That's fine. But I think in the context of what we're discussing here, uh, we should discuss the issue of the Senate and its role. Thank you. And I would support um, the, the, the Senator Norris's point that we write to on Taoiseach, asking that it be considered here. Um, Charlie first, then John, then Chris. No, Charlie first. Sorry, uh, Chairman Charlie Flanagan. Uh, I just think it would be... Uh, it would be somewhat regrettable, Chair, if the convention, uh, which has worked very well, uh, becomes embroiled in what is essentially a political campaign by David and Angus and others. Uh, I believe this body has worked very well since January. We've had great engagement. We have made some important recommendations, uh, which, have, which have not only been received by government, but have already been acted upon uh, there is a commitment in the programme for government uh, between the government parties of this country uh, that the people of this country would be asked this year to, to decide on the future of the Shannon. Uh, that is direct democracy, as was mentioned this morning, where the people will be asked to vote on the Shannon. My understanding that vote will take place in September. Uh, I, I, I feel it would be somewhat unwise if this citizen-dominated convention were to become embroiled in the campaign, and I'd have to counsel caution against it. Mm. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. And we haven't had a citizen voice yet on this, I think. No, 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 sorry. Look, I see uh, lots of citizens want to come in. John, you're first, then Keith, and then Sorka, and, and then yourself. And then we are going to have to, uh, we can't have everybody speaking. OK, could we have the mic, please? Thank you. John Connolly, Dublin. Um, Mr. Chairman, it would be absolutely odd in the extreme if the convention that we're attending on the Constitution made no reference to the Senate. It would be absolutely uh, extreme um, that that should be the case. And I hope we don't blemish this convention by having that omission on our reflections. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Keith. Uh, Keith Burke. Um, I generally agree that it's important to discuss. I have a concern as a 66. Um, we had a private meeting at the inaugural where lobbyists were told not to come directly to the convention. And I fear we're about to set a precedent that may affect the 66. That's all I wanted to say. Thank, thank you. Uh, Sorker was next, uh, then Francis, and then yourself. Uh, yeah. No, no, sorry. Yeah, Sorker. Yeah. Sorker yeah. O'Neill. Um, I'm part of the steering group that, uh, for this convention. Um, we discussed this at last night. Um, as much as I agree with looking at the Shannon uh, process and the abolition of it, I don't agree about how it's been the convention and has been hijacked for a, a specific purpose. Um, I think it sets terrible precedent, uh, precedent, and I fear where does it end then that you know anyone else then can jump on the bandwagon and try to pressure the group into whatever means they feel necessary. Although I, I don't propose that I have the right answer. I don't believe we should go down this road, uh, but as I say, uh, the Shannon definitely does need looking at, but not for this uh, hijacking for what I would see it as. Okay. Could you have the mic here, please? Uh, yeah, Francis, you're next after this. Uh, Finbar Ryan. Uh, I don't support Senator Nor Norris's proposal uh, because um, I think both the Doyle and the Shannon over the last 25 or 30 years 
had it within their own remit to do something about reforming the Shannad, and they did nothing. And now there's a crisis. So I don't support him. Thank you. Okay, thanks very much indeed, Francis. Uh, Francis there. And we'll take four or five more comments after that, and then I have to close it off. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Yeah. I would just want to point out, uh, again, as has been said, uh, that the steering group, which was elected by this body, uh, gave a recommendation, I understand, or said they did not support the request that was being made today. I also note your own comments in relation uh, to, to the issue before us. And I would take a, a different perspective from David in the sense that I think it could be seen as a usurpation of the approach and the role uh, that we've taken so far in the convention to agree to this. Okay. And then, could we have the mic here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Aideen. Um, Aideen Larkin, um, my fear is that we would lose our independence if we do agree to um, Senator Norris's proposal. I think we've all said a few people, I know Keith has said it, I, I think the fact that we have worked so well independently and it's, we've kind of gained a lot of credibility and it's taken us a while to, to build that up, I would worry that by allowing that this discussion, this discussion is not, this weekend isn't about the Dáil or about the Shannon and it's becoming it already, we're allowing enough time already, I, I think we need to okay. not. Uh, Owen, and then... Uh, Owen Finnegan. Um, I just don't see the point in, in going down this road. If there's a referendum coming up in October or September, uh, leave it to the people. Let democracy take its place. I just don't see any point in this. Fake. And then we go to Catherine, and then, I, I, and then yourself, and then I think we'll close it. No, not, not you, Maureen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Fake. Yeah, Fake, Machanil. Um, Taoiseach's nominee to the, to the Shannon. <clears throat> My sense is that yeah, it's, you're between a rock and a hard place, Chairman. Uh, as an independent chairman, I hear your, your views. High value has been a part of, b before this convention, has been a part of the We the Citizens process, which, which ended up being a part of the convention. I value the integrity of what's happening here. I'm also listening to the straw poll of the 66. My sense is, is that uh, this shouldn't be a part of the work, of the, uh, the current work of the convention. Uh, it's unfortunate in terms of the timing. Maybe the Taoiseach did this deliberately, but certainly the, the, the politics of it has means that I think there's, there is a train now left the station regarding, regarding uh, the Shannon uh, issue. What I would ask you to do, uh, Chairman, uh, listening to, to what's happening here, is that uh, as you make your report to uh, the government and to the Taoiseach, that should the referendum uh, uh, not be passed, and should uh, the Shannon remain, mm. that uh, and immediately after that, the first item agenda for the next uh, convention would be the reform of the Shannon in light mm. of the discussion mm. and the deeply philosophical discussion we had today. Because certainly, it is quite strange to hear talk about electoral reform, to talk the power about the government, to talk about efficiency and accountability, and uh, one leg of that three-legged stool, the Shannon, is uh, about to be either sawn mm. off or reinforced. Mm. And I think, mm. it, I think I would ask you, Chairman, mm. to mm. Uh, insist that uh, one of the initial items, should the, mm. uh, uh, the referendum uh, not be passed, yes. that, that it would be a major item for, for the next work at the Convention. Well, thank you very much. I think that's a very constructive comment, I have to say. Catherine, and, and then one more, and then Robert. Thank you. you can, Robert, I can have the last um, one. Did you want to say? No. Okay, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, Catherine. Catherine Murray. Um, I have to agree with the people that said this is not the forum for this to be discussed or voted on. And I would also feel quite strongly that some of the senators and TDs that spoke in favour of it here are actually... Um, putting undue influence on the citizen members of the convention because this wasn't part of our remit here at all today. So I would certainly say it should not be discussed at this forum. There, there will be a time and a place for it. Thank you. Thanks, Catherine. Robert, I think you'll have the last word on this and then I'm going to... Could I strongly support uh, Senator McConnell because for two reasons. One, because uh, his suggestion is so sensible that mm. if, if the population decide uh, not to abolish the Senate, then I think it's relevant for us to, to discuss it here. Mm. And the second reason is that both parties in government put abolition on the, of the Senate on their electoral, uh, before the electorate, when, the, when they went uh, to election. So for that reason, it's, it's on the uh, government agenda. So for those two reasons, I think what Sen Senator O'Connell is suggesting is the right approach. Okay. Yeah. 
you can have you can have the last word then. Okay, I'm getting soft. Thank you, Chair David <laughs> O'Reilly. Um, I'd have to disagree with Senator Norris, but respectfully so. I hope I'll try and avoid terms like uh, usurping and hijacking. Um, I think that today is not the time or the place to be discussing the Shannon. However, I actually agree that um, the Shannon should be maintained in, in some way, shape or another. But I think essentially what we're looking at is electoral systems for the doll, so P or STV, and it's very complicated. And I don't know about, about the rest of the members, but I found we've been quite struggling to get through a lot of the dense material and that you know, the time to do that is going to take a lot of time, a lot of effort. And I think today, really, this weekend and next weekend, it's not the time or the place. I think the citizens will get their rights to discuss and vote on reforming the um, Shannon because a referendum is to be brought in. So I think we will have our rights, but I think just it's not quite the time and the place for something quite complex when we are already doing something very complex. Um, okay. I'm going to have to find a way of, of taking the view of the um, of the convention on this matter, and so the, I mean. Chair, but I just say that all I asked for was time. And I apologise if anybody thought I was hijacking the convention. I d deliberately didn't want to, and I deliberately didn't involve myself in the pros or cons. Uh, and if people thought I was hijacking it, then I apologise to them. All I asked for was a simple vote that whether or not we should just write the Taoiseach and uh, respectfully ask him. Uh, to include it. I didn't think that was so revolutionary, but if people feel it is too much, well then I'd be happy to be to abide by their view. Okay. I mean, the issue is whether the convention should um, write Zishok and ask him to uh, basically allow, no, I, I think I've finished now, yeah. allow, um, effectively it would mean to ask us to completely reorder our, our schedule uh, to allow this discussion to... to sorry? Well, I, I mean, in the context of uh, the government, um, a minister having said in a debate in the Shannad last week that the government intends to introduce a, an enabling bill for the referendum to happen next week. I mean, the, the idea of asking the Taoiseach to you know, to, to postpone the referendum seems, you know, it just doesn't seem sensible. I mean, the government are taking a, a clear decision on this, taking account of, of all the circumstances. Um, so the only question is what... Yeah, thank you. Um, but it, the question is whether the, the, then the convention would wish to somehow or other reorder its programme uh, to uh, fit in a, 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 deba a debate on the Shannad, uh, even though specifically th that would be actually technically breaching the resolution passed by the Act of the Oroctus, because, you know, which specifically says we consider any other matters when we have finished the eight that we have been asked to deal with. So, I mean, that is the... The, we would be asking the Taoiseach, effectively, to undo or to, to change, have introduced another resolution which would supersede the one that was given, was passed by the Oireachtas last July. That's effectively what, uh, the, if we were to, if the Convention were to write to the Taoiseach, that's the only point at which, about which it should, it, it's, it's trying to, uh, to argue. So, the question is, does the convention feel that we should write to the Taoiseach or not? I mean, obviously, even if the letter goes to the Taoiseach, the Taoiseach has the right to say yes or no, but I mean, that's a separate matter. But the question, I think, for today is, what's the feeling in the room? Should we write to the Taoiseach uh, to ask for something like Senator Norris is asking for? Could I have a show of hands in favour of that? Okay. Well, the cameras are not here anyway. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'd be very happy. Normally, I'm much happier with secret ballots than than uh, the, than shows of hands. I think it's more democratic. If, if we can keep it within the room, as of who's voting for what. If we're going to set precedent like this, I'd rather not have it on camera. Fra Francis. 
There may be a Just a point of clarification about what's in the letter. You're asking the Taoiseach uh, to change the programme that has been agreed on. Is that effectively and to well, include a new item? That's I just I'm, want clarity that's on that. That's what I'm pointing out is the consequence of writing to the Taoiseach. I mean, there's no point in asking. I mean, if the convention is expressing a view that it wants to, um, it wants to discuss uh, the Shannad, that means effectively going against the resolution that was uh, passed by the Houses of the Oireachtas last July. David. Yeah, I don't want to complicate things any further, but there actually is two proposals. One is that we would write to the Taoiseach and ask the Taoiseach to postpone holding the referendum and allow the Constitutional Convention to discuss the Shannon. The second option is, and we've done this in a number of different ways already, that in the commentary or the report, as Fake has said, which will go back to the government, that in that, uh, the sentiment that is expressed by some people that profound constitutional change is going to happen if we abolish the Shannon, that it should be discussed. That's an option as well. So mm -hmm. I think that there's two options. Yeah. And maybe, you know, Fake has put, put forward a proposal that might get the support of the convention. It might be seen as maybe less confrontational with the government. Although I would support, I don't think there's anything wrong mm. in asking the Taoiseach to do something. You know, mm. I think it is, I would support David on that. But I think that there is two proposals which should, should mm. be looked at. Yeah. And I mean, a variation that then is Fiuk's comma, is Fiuk's uh, suggestion. That's another possibility. Tom. Thank you, Chairman Tom Bork. Uh, I'm not in favour of reforming the Shannon, I'd say that initially. But when we signed up to this, we knew that the Taoiseach had committed himself to having a referendum in September. Uh, we knew, and we're coming along here, that it wasn't part of our agenda. Now, well, I see a lack of logic in having uh, a constitutional convention that doesn't discuss this issue. At the same time, we knew what we were signing up to. I think we should leave things set. Thank you. Okay. Deirdre. Hi. Can I just say, I'm sorry, Deirdre. Can I just say, my, I, I'm possibly not understanding this. I mean, my understanding of the convention is that whatever we vote on, it then goes to the government with a recommendation as to whether or not we're having a referendum. And in this case, it's already been said there will be a referendum. There will be a referendum. So, I mean, is there a fear that, I mean, the reason for asking for this to be discussed, is it a fear that it won't be discussed properly outside of this? And in that case, maybe this isn't the venue to change it. Maybe because given that we have a fixed schedule. No, no, schedule, David, no, I'm sorry. Wait, yeah. But given that we have a fixed schedule, you know, I don't see why the convention, which the remit is to send a recommendation whether or not there should be. Mm, uh, and I have to say, like, one thing that's very good about the convention and that I think everybody has said is that there's excellent experts. It's done in a very fair way. Everybody's getting their say. And I, definitely, it, when it comes to a debate in the Shannon, I, I want that to be how it's done and not just polemic and media. But mm. I don't know, is this the way to go about it? Okay, thank you. I'm going to Hi. take a few more voices then. Paula Sheridan, um, just briefly, I agree with what Fiuk said and what David said, but also if we do wait and have this when we can discuss at the end, the like the other, if the Shannon is already gone at that stage, there won't be any point in discussing it. So I think maybe David's second recommendation, the second option he put on the table might be the best idea. Okay. Then Andrew after that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Senator Lorraine Higgins, I just want to commend you um, on the eminent job that you have done uh, to date with chairing this, this committee um, and convention. Um, I just feel that uh, what has been raised here has been an unwelcome distraction from the programme that has been decided. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, people haven't gotten any prior briefing um, on this, um, which I would have a difficulty with personally because I wouldn't like anybody making a, a decision that wasn't an informed one to write to the Taoiseach in that regard. Um, I do feel that this is an independent uh, body and I think it should remain this way as well. I don't think that any lobbying should be uh, permitted or allowed. And I think the people ultimately will make their own decisions um, with regard to the future of the Shannon in September when a referendum will be brought before the Irish people. Thank you. Thank you. Andrew, I think we're going to give you the last word on this. Thanks, Chairman. Um, I, I don't envy your, your position. It's a tricky one. Uh, Andrew Kinsella. Um, Whatever the rights and wrongs of, of Senator Norris bringing it up today, um, 
I do feel that uh, it's a bit nonsensical. To, I, I think the agenda does allow for discussion of the topic, but it would have to be at the end of the convention. But to do so clearly, I think, would make no sense if that were after the, the referendum. Um, so my own feeling is it, it is available on the agenda. Um, were a letter to be written to the Taoiseach, he is also an adult, uh, as are the members of the government, and they are well capable of replying to that letter in whichever way they should see fit. Thank you. Chairman, well, could I just formulate in one sentence my suggestion, and I can bring the two proposals together? Yeah, microphone, sorry, microphone. Thank you very much for indulge, your indulgence, which I appreciate, and for your chairmanship. I just want to suggest a formula of words that I think could satisfy everybody, and then we get on with what is the real business here today. All I would suggest is that you write respectfully to the Taoiseach, as adults and as citizens, to another citizen who is a TD, and ask that the convention be allowed to discuss the issue of reform or abolition before the referendum. Now, that leaves it open to the Taoiseach and the government to decide, are they going to front load it for us? Or are they going to have the referendum at time? Because I really think this is such an important issue. And I haven't discussed the merits or demerits of the issue. I've just said, let's ask the Taoiseach if he can facilitate us in this by having this discussion. So the proposal was that the convention be allowed, we write to the Taoiseach to ask the Taoiseach respectfully, that the convention be allowed to discuss this issue, which is important, before the referendum. I think that's fair, but let the people decide. I'm happy with the common sense of the decent people of Ireland, and if they say, hump off, that's my problem. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Charlie, maybe we, we'll have to bring this to a close very shortly. Yeah. On the first occasion we met here, on the first occasion we met here, uh, you supervised the election of a steering committee. Could I ask you to remind the convention of a decision of the steering committee in this regard and the importance of not undermining our own steering committee. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, sure, sure. I couldn't hear that. Sorry, it's a steering committee, it's not yeah, a party yeah. whip. Okay, what I'm going to propose is that we actually, sorry, no, I, I'm, I'm going to, because we, it, it, I, this is precisely what I didn't want to happen, that this issue would suddenly take legs, and it would, no, I'm sorry, Thomas, I, I, would suddenly take legs and would absorb a huge amount of, of our valuable time. Um, so what I'm proposing is that we would actually uh, accede effectively to David's request, that we, we, we ask the convention, would we, to, would we write to the Taoiseach, um, and that would be, we'd frame, we'd frame words on that and we'd put it on a ballot paper, which we will have printed in a while, we'll, as soon as we can, and, um, and vote on it. I, I do so, and I, I, I'm doing so while repeating what I said at the beginning, that I have grave reservations about the moving, uh, uh, about, if you like, not respecting the basic um, the resolution or asking for the basic resolution uh, informing our establishment to be, to be changed. And I, my reservations are around the, way, uh, the, the issue that we are getting the convention embroiled in a current political controversy. And I don't believe that is in the convention's best interest. But we will proceed with the, with the, with the ballot paper and I think we will bring, if you like, this, the discussion on this to a close. Is that, is that okay? Thank you. I, I'm sorry, but I mean, I, I do value, I do believe that the role of independent chair is an important role. And I've tried to exercise that independence at all times. And I'm only saying what I'm saying in the interest, as I see it, of the credibility and long-term value of the convention. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry, Catherine. I think we're going to have to we're going to have to um, close the debate because we've we've run on about probably. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, I, I think... Someone is going to ask for yeah. something to be discussed. I, yeah. I think this should not be discussed here. I feel yeah. really, really strongly about it, yeah. and I will not vote. Thank you. I'm sorry, I think... Well, uh, well <laughs> we're back to voting again. Um, if you don't vote, then your view won't be uh, counted. I mean, if you're really keen that it shouldn't be discussed, then I think vote to say that it shouldn't, the letter shouldn't be written. I think that's the logic of your position. No, I'm sorry, Hetty, we're, we're, going, to, we're going to move on.